Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching Ford vs Ferrari by James Mangold, starring Matt Damon and Christian Bale. This is a movie that I've heard of when it first came out. I think it got pretty successful, but honestly I had no interest in watching it because I know next to nothing about cars or racing for that matter. I know the names of some famous brands or specific car models, but that's where my knowledge ends. I have zero clues about the technical side of things, let alone the racing scene. What I do know is that Le Mans, it's a 24 hour race, so it's an endurance race, right? And this is the story of Ford versus Ferrari in Le Mans in the 60s. The actors here, Matt Damon and uh, Christian Bale, they need no introductions whatsoever. I'm a big fan of both, so I'm very excited to review this movie as it was chosen by my patrons. But before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page for full interviews and reactions to this movie and over 270 movies, two TV shows, early access and weekly posts what to watch next. You can link your own copy to watch along and the links in the description below. Please consider being a patron. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications to check out my other videos. Like if you like this video, feel free to dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. Ford vs Ferrari, Mangold, Damon, Bale, Let's go. I just checked the length of the movie. It's about two and a half hours. One of my patrons said this is the movie that made them interested in cars, even though previously he had no interest. We've reached the halfway point and so far witnessed Aston Martin number five driven by Carroll Shelby. Oh, Shelby. I know that. So we're in 1959 Le Mans. And I'm assuming this is Shelby, Matt Damon. We all know the Shelby cars. I mean, safety standards back in the 50s and 60s, they're so different to today. Am I on goddamn fire? No, you're not on fire. Go the tank. Go the tank. That's called determination. I wonder if a single driver drives the whole 24 hours or do they have shifts? It's the title. An American wins Le Mans. Shelby. What a cut. This is as serious as it gets. In my opinion, you're lucky to be sitting here today. <laughs> well, I feel real lucky. Well, you're alive, my friend. Here's a point. 7,000 RPM, where everything fades. The only question that matters, who are you? I'm really enjoying the subtlety of the soundtrack. It's very lo-fi. Big fan. It's being driven. The way it's being driven. Too much fuel, not enough spark. That's what's making a misfire. You want to run that by me in English? Christian Bale, he's playing an Englishman, finally. <laughs> he's always playing American. Drive like you mean it. Hard, tight. Sure, one clean. The customer's always right. Ah. The last time I saw him doing an English accent was in Empire of the Sun. What type of girl are you? Type of girl who likes the smell of wet gasoline. Oh. And rubber. Yo, John Bernthal. Here's what I want you to do. Walk home. Man comes to my office with an idea. That man keeps his job. Well, Brumos is looking for a driver. For our number two car at Sebring. Is that right? How is that even possible? I think your guy Myers can make the grade. Oh, well, yeah. Hey. I mean, he is a little difficult. So the 1959 scene was a flashback of Shelby. Okay, it's starting to make sense. Happy Bill! It closes. <laughs> Without sponsors, you get no car, Ken. He's a good driver, but he's hot headed and difficult to work with. What a perfect role for Christian Bale. Oh, that's why he doesn't like the Germans. He actually fought in World War II. What happened to your shield? You design. Guy wins the 24-hour Le Mans, suddenly retires, starts selling cars. He won the Le Mans? I have a question for racing fans. What's a good vantage point to sit to watch an entire race? Love the soundtrack. It's almost like a western, the sense of urgency in the score. Yeah, the journeyman won. <laughs> It's difficult, but good. That's what I've been saying. Pops, frame this. The IRS came. Ooh. They've padlocked the garage. Oh, my man's in debt. You see, kids today, 
They want glamour. They want a sex appeal. They want to go fast. James Bond does not drive a Ford, sir. Aston Martin. That's because he's a degenerate. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I've reviewed the entire Bond franchise on the channel. Please check them out. They're amazing. Ferrari. Now, they've won four out of the last five Le Mans. Ferrari makes fewer cars in a year than we make in a day. Yep. <laughs> Ferrari wins at Le Mans. People, they, they want some of that victory. What a scene. What a salesman. The cinematography of that scene, it seemed simple, but it was really, really, really well done. Like how Ford was always framed from one single angle. Wow. our cameras are just for history. Everything hand-built. Yeah, nothing mass-produced is what he's trying to say. This is the Dipartimento delle Macchine da Corsa. Racing Department. If I wish to race Le Mans, and you do not wish for me to race Le Mans, do we or do we not go? You do not go. In quel caso, se non deve essere... Grazie, ho capito. Tornate alla vostra grossa, brutta fabbrica. Back to your big, ugly factory. A costruire le vostre... Tell your pig-headed boss that all his uh, smug executives are uh, worthless sons of whores. Did he actually say all this, Ferrari? He's Henry for the second. That's not going to sit well with Ford at all. I mean, we saw how proud he was of his heritage and his grandfather, right? So, oh man. Fiat buys Ferrari, right. That's something that happened. What an alternate timeline that would have been, right? Ford and Ferrari. Old man Enzo had no intention of selling to us. He used us to up his price. Oh, that's why the pictures were leaked. I'm so stupid. What exactly did he say? He said Ford makes ugly little cars and we make them in an ugly factory. He said you're not Henry Ford. You're Henry Ford II. Yeah, that got to him. Brilliant performance by that actor. The change in facial expression. Wow. I don't care what it costs. We're gonna build a race car. And we're going to bury that goddamn greasy wop a hundred oh, feet wow. deep okay. under the finish line in Le Mans. That's an Netflix slur. <laughs> What's with the wrench? You actually got it framed. That? I know I owe Ford for that last batch, Andy. Mr. Shelby, I can assure you I'm not here for money that you might owe Ford for spare parts. You're not. He's here to recruit you. He wanted his company to win the 24 hours of Le Mans. That takes something money can't buy. You're exhausted. You're hungry. Can't remember your name, what country you're in. Even if we had a brilliant partner, even if we wrote a uh, blank check. <laughs> that got his attention. You could buy the guy who gets you a shot. Ken Miles. <laughs> the performances have been excellent so far. You're going to build a car to beat old man Ferrari. You think that Ford are going to let you build the car that you want. This Sunday at Cloverfield, they're launching the new Mustang. They're going to announce the race program. I think it's the secretary's car. <laughs> I like it. Would you ask him to keep his hands off the paintwork? Don't get me wrong, Lenny. Leo. It looks fantastic. But inside, it's a lump of lard. Dressed up to fool the public. Tell you what, that's like riding a bike. Did this happen in real life? Because that's crazy. We, uh, we met. We met. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Shelby knows exactly what happened. Do not step on that stage if you don't trust me. Please welcome Mr. Carroll Shelby. Gotta go. Uh, he doesn't like oversight. And he almost made it clear, right? He, he wants to do it himself. But now, just as Ken Miles said, he'd have to answer to the executives. But there are a few people who find something they have to do. I'm that guy. And I know one other man feels exactly the same. His name is Mr. Henry Ford. Yeah. Mm. He is playing the game. I wonder how he's feeling about it. Yeah, he doesn't like it. 30 minutes. I'll have you back for meatloaf and gravy. I'm a big fan of the soundtrack. I've said it like five times already. And also the actual sound design. Yo! That's the famous car. Talk is not reaching the road. 
steering's loose because the front end gets light. And over 140. Anything else? The pacing of the movie is pretty slow, but it's deliberate. Shell offer me a job, Ford has a car that they want to put up against a Ferrari. You don't lie to me, exactly. Ken. He's upset because he didn't share it. You know, the IRS have the garage. I'm not losing my home. It's 200 a day. $200 a day, that's a lot of money for him. Yeah, he's gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, at this point, his wife will push him to do it. $200 a day? Yeah. That's like $1,000 a day now. Grabbing air. That's the problem. They're doing aerodynamic tests manually instead of using early computers. Damn, he's right! Well, it's a hell of a lineup. Ken Miles, Phil Hill, Chris Amon. Ford means reliability. Ken Miles not a Ford man. Oh! Giddy up! I love the editing in the scene, the cuts. We think he may be too pure. He doesn't align with Ford's values. Wedges! We have wedges! Oh, good, good, good. Wow! Look at these classic cars. I wish I knew more about them. You're not coming again. It is their opinion that you are not a good image, so you cannot drive their race car. What a performance. You can see the disappointment in his face. Another Ford has come into the pit. They're being pushed into the pit. Cascade. Still can't get over how many cars there are in this movie. I'm so interested in seeing how this film was made. Give me one reason why I don't fire everyone associated with this abomination, starting with you. You can't win a race by a committee. You need one man in charge. We're faster than he is, even with the wrong driver and all the committees. That man is scared to death that this year, you actually might be smart enough to start trusting me. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. He got the go-ahead from the boss. Thank you, sir. Yep, and now he's back to Ken Miles. You want me to apologize? Mmm. Do you have any idea the kind of shit that I had to eat just to get four wheels on that grid? <laughs> Ow! You're right! But the operation's fully on now. Full swing. You're going fast, but as the car speeds up, everything else slows down. If you're gonna push a piece of machinery to the limit and expect it to hold together, you have to have some sense of where that limit is. The wise words. The fastest I've ever driven, there was this one time and only one time I've driven at 280 or 90 kilometers per hour. And that was insane. I will never do that again. <laughs> I remember the car just vibrating and it was from the Sydney to Melbourne highway. You cannot destroy the whole thing, not for one goddamn guy. Sure I can. Why? But he is the right Cause guy. Cause while we're here talking, he's out there getting it done. Look at the brake discs, they're red. Ooh. Ken! Wow. Ken! Come on. Swap out the entire braking system, rotors included. Put in a fresh one. Are we allowed to do that? I don't know. Have you ever been on fire? So as long as you get out of the car, you're okay. These slower moments really help in building these characters. I have been appointed overall executive director of the racing program. Now, I, I do hope that this won't be a problem between us. Did he just lock him in here? <laughs> Carol, did you see what $9 million feels like? Hey! Holy crap, Ford's gonna get in the car. I can feel it. I can feel the speed. I had no idea. I wish my daddy, he were alive to see this. Wow. <laughs> to feel this. Now you want to win Le Mans. 
you really want to take first place, Ken Miles is the man to do it. Wow. Now, you let Ken Miles race Daytona. If he wins, he gets to drive Lamar. I had no idea that Daytona was this popular. She's hot! Alright! 7,000 RPM, 7,000 rotations per minute. He's almost got the lead. Two more four cars to go. Oh, the sense of speed and adrenaline. It's stoppable. Guess he gets to keep his company and relief. Which team was it, Leo? Shelby American, Miles driving. <laughs> Son of a bitch. He wasn't even pissed, he was just impressed. I think this is the first time we've actually seen him peaceful. Get a maximum exit, let the car run free over the brow. It's almost romantic in how he's describing the track. You can't make every lap perfect. Sleep, bulldog. Me too. I'm not driving. The director here, James Mangold, this is like the third time he's using a light behind the actor. When Shelby gave a speech in front of Ford in the unveiling of the Mustang, he also had a very similar shot. Well, if this were a beauty pageant, we just lost. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Ferraris are something else, when it comes to design at least. The door! That's a rough start. Ooh, this is carnage. Is Le Mans this scary? I mean... Like five crashes in the first 30 seconds. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> just one Where's time. Miles? <laughs> He's busy fixing the door. The bloody door won't close! Alright, alright. I wonder whether they were using actual race footage on the TV screen. He's pushing the car too hard. That's not the plan. Let's change. Screw your plan. <laughs> you tried to get Ken Miles out like 10 different times. Happy birthday, old shit. Right, right run. Oh, so they do change drivers. Oh, man, the camera work. It really exudes a sense of speed. And incredible stunt work. 11 p.m., seven hours. James Mangold, the director, his use of slow zooms in this movie have been brilliant. Wow, the cinematography is just gorgeous. And you can tell that the cars themselves, they're not CGI. Maybe some of the rain and after effects, but real stunt people are driving at these speeds. Hey, what was that? Mr. Was he trying to sabotage Ken Miles again? Yeah, what an a-hole. Oh, for a second there, I thought the brakes failed. I think they did. Breaks! Nothing! Yep. Gone! All right, let's go, let's go, let's go! It's against the rules. You know, just change oh, things. No. This is not... Oh, is you show me even... where it says in that little rule book where I can't swap out my upright <laughs> assembly. A part is a part. We read your damn rule book. <laughs> oh, man, the look on Miles' face. You can still take him, but you gotta pass him twice. I get it! Pass him twice! <laughs> Ooh, he's playing mind games. Shelby's playing mind games. <laughs> now they're all paranoid about what bolt is missing from the car. 
What did you come here for? I am so exhilarated right now. Laser focus. It's about who breaks last. Oh yeah, the new breaks. That gave him the lead. Seven thousand RPM, nine thousand. It's gonna blow. It's gonna blow. <laughs> I can't believe I'm rooting against Ferrari. Where's Bandini? They're done. Finished. They're out. I need to look at yeah, Enzo. <laughs> Your car is missing, friend. Running one, two, three, Mr. Ford. Wouldn't it be great if all three Fords lined up? Cross the finish line at the exact same time. <laughs> what would you have him do? Slow down. Yeah. What a wow. I, I really dislike that dude. Don't go near my driver. Go on. This is what Mr. Ford wants. Go on now. He expects the Go on. Make that photograph happen. Yeah. That photograph. That's good. My choice. Your choice. So much respect to Shelby. Bring him in, Shelby. Or I will get you banned from the SCCA and the FIA. Ken Miles is behind the wheel, Leo. That's his car to the finish. Or is he finally coming to the realization that he's going to win Le Mans? Oh, he's slowing down. But what a sight, to be honest. Three, four cars. And that's a lot of character growth for him. It's kind of a bittersweet ending to the race. Hey, where's the goddamn tie? What? Oh, you son hey, of hey, a hey, hey, bitch! Hey, you you oh, knew! Enough! Enough! enough. enough. Realize he's not the winner. And he got the tip of the hat from Enzo. I never should have asked you. Selling cars, huh? That's what they do. You promised me the drive, not the win. Wow, what a beautiful way to look at it. Seven thousand RPM, where everything fades, and all that's left is a body moving through space and time. I felt that once in my life. The only question that matters. <gasps> oh man, does he die in a in in a, in, a, in an accident? I'm at a loss for words, guys. Oh what do you man, think? yeah, it's fantastic. I can tell the shit after an hour. I need you to come outside for maybe a minute and do what? Sell the car. Now either they want them or they don't. Am I some kind of a lounge act? No. Am I here to talk people into things? It's been six months, Shell. Wow. Six months. Money could get you the car, but not the driver. That wrench that he had framed because Miles threw at him. I remember that wrench. My dad threw it at you. Dude. Thanks. Your daddy was uh... a great man. So, Ken Miles was never a rich man, or he never made bank. I don't know, man. I kind of feel bad for him. Revered by racing fans worldwide, Ken Miles was inducted into the Motorsport Hall of Fame. Carroll Shell became one of the most successful and celebrated designers in history. Shelby Miles won Le Mans 67, 68, 64 years! And it remains... Oh, wow. Miles and Shelby, the real ones. What a film! I thoroughly enjoyed it, guys. Um, if there's a making off of this movie, like I said before, please let me know. Wow. Okay, I took a little time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was a fantastically made biographical movie. I love that the film felt grounded in reality, if that makes any sense. I've considered the strengths to be the direction, the performances, especially from the actor portraying uh, Ford, the set design and aesthetics. 
the stunt work and visual effects, and finally, the sound design and score, which was a particular highlight for me. While I wouldn't consider this a weakness, since I thought the writing was very, very good for the most part, but now that I've had some time to think about it, to reflect, I could see the runtime being shortened by 10 minutes, maybe 15. I think the movie would have flowed a little more smoothly with a shorter second act. With that being said, the scenes themselves were great and it did in fact help flesh out these characters. Let's start with the directing by James Mangold and the script from uh, Jez and John Henry Butterworth and Jason Keller. I am a little familiar with uh, Mangold's work. I think I've watched 310 to Yuma when it first came out. I don't remember much of that movie, but I do remember Bale being in it. The other film I've watched from him um, were the Wolverine films. With Logan, I think, being a standout in character study. I, I, I thought he brought a lot of that into this movie here, making this film even better. Ford vs. Ferrari was primarily about the story of Shelby and Miles, and less about Ferrari. At first, I thought the imbalance in storytelling structure would cause the movie to be a little lopsided in Ford's favor. But honestly, I respected how Ferrari was portrayed here, especially Enzo. Almost like a mythical company with an unbeatable car, uh, like Mount Everest. The uphill battle that Ford faced while challenging Ferrari's uh, Le Mans title was, was the main drama of the movie. And it was spearheaded by spectacular performances from uh, Matt Damon, Christian Bale, uh, Josh Lucas, John Berenthal, and I had to look this up because I didn't know the actor's name, Tracy Letts as Ford, who I thought had the standout performance alongside uh, Christian Bale and maybe Matt Damon, especially in the third act, after Miles dies now. Damon can act, <laughs> but Christian Bale and um, Tracy Letts were a little better in this particular film, in my opinion. Almost every single scene involving Ford II, uh, Tracy Letts, it was electric, no pun intended. <laughs> For example, when Shelby explains why they shouldn't be fired in front of Ford um, and how they have Ferrari exactly where they want them. Wow, what a scene. The way Ford didn't even acknowledge, didn't even look Shelby in the eye. Man, that was powerful. But my favorite scene of the entire film by far was when uh, Shelby gets Ford into his uh, $9 million experimental GT40 and he breaks down talking about how he wished his father was alive to experience the speed. Man, that was emotional. And I think that scene will stick with me for a long, long, long time. I've ended up learning a lot about the history of Ford, Ferrari and the origins of these car companies and the rivalries. There's Shelby, I think I heard McLaren's name in there somewhere. I don't know how accurate they were in portraying the more nuanced personalities of these eccentric characters like Miles or Enzo or even Ford for that matter. But I really feel like the filmmakers got the essence of these characters right in this movie. Everything felt authentic. And that brings us to the excellent production values and breathtakingly beautiful classic cars. I have no idea how they managed to get everything looking that real. The sets, the costumes, the feeling like you're right there with them in the 1960s. It was, it was so good. The stunt work during the racing scenes were phenomenal. I could tell that they were uh, minimizing the use of CG here. I could see some of the lighting work, uh, the headlights, for example, uh, in the dark, or some of the rain effects. They were CG, but the actual cars looked like they were racing for real. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because it looked real. The cinematography and the camera work were also, I would say, no noteworthy. Uh, even the scenes where the characters are just talking, the cinematographer made sure that almost every shot was visually interesting and dynamic, always, almost always moving, I noticed. The slow zooms during the monologues, uh, the movements of these actors inside the scene uh, while they were changing positions, they were all taken into account. There's a huge difference between a filmmaker just going through the motions like an average Marvel movie what? 
and actual artists making art. And I think this film leans more towards art. That's, mm, I like that. Finally, one of the highlights, main highlights of the movie for me, uh, there were the sound design and the score. Both felt seamless and complementary, like yin and yang. I don't know how authentic the car sounds were, because I, don't, I know next to nothing about it, but I can tell you that they sounded visceral and authentic. I don't know. The score was also subtle, but very well suited for almost every scene. I need to look up who did the score here, because it was great. I love it when everything just comes together and just works. It's true for this film, and that's wonderful. The only criticism I had came after I finished the movie, not during. In my opinion, it was a tad bit long in the second act, uh, but when I was watching it, I really did not notice it. If you put a gun to my head and ask me what I would cut from this movie, I'd have a hard time, but maybe I'd say some of the establishing shots uh, in the second act or some of the scenes of Miles at home. I also understand why the director chose to keep those scenes. It really built up his character. I really can't complain. It's just an opinion, just an observation. Overall, Ford vs. Ferrari was excellent. Uh, I would consider this to be a future classic. It had drama, fantastic performances, a stellar cast, including so many names we know, superb sound design and score, authentic Russian values, and most importantly, these classic cars. The directing from Mangold was as good as the script and the storytelling and the sense of speed and adrenaline it felt overflowing to the point like it came out of the screen and into our hearts directly an easy recommendation for everyone including non-car lovers i think this movie was greater than the sum of its individual parts anyways thank you for watching i have a patreon page consuming a patreon please subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for instant notifications do check out my other videos, like if you like this video, feel free to dislike it and I will see you in the next one.